Let's go out front. And good evening. I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, Trump bullying Haley. Trump tonight calling her a bird brain. Leaders as well is working. They're all just getting on board. I mean, just listen today to the chairwoman of the RNC who had once vowed to stay neutral in this race. And that just follows Republican lawmaker after lawmaker who are caving and rushing to jump behind Trump. John Cornyn says, let's it's past time. I just want to pause for some important context, it seems. 0.16% of the United States population has voted. 0.16%. And that 0.16% live in only two states. Now, as for Haley, she's certainly the calculus. She's got away tonight. All right, Diane, thank you so much. Uh, and, and, and here in our conversation, I mean, Ryan, really interesting hearing all those different perspectives of the people that Diane was speaking to today. Um, you know, some say drop out, some say stay in. They believe in her. Uh, Mayor of Charleston was interesting that she had that conversation. What is the case for Haley staying in right now? Well, honestly assured of that, she's not going to be a successor if Donald Trump wins decisively in this primary contest, uh, you know, for 2028. So this is her shot. If she sees this as an opportunity to make it. Dealing with, uh, you know, calls her bird brain, all the sexist, uh, you know, invectitude that he throws her direction. And the fact that, well, the party seems to be getting on board. I've frankly been really to sort of be a beacon for something else. And I applaud that. I think this Republican party needs that desperately. And but there, there are always things you don't know. And maybe that's what she's hanging her hat on. Maybe that's sort of a hope and a prayer. Yeah. Um, but frankly, it is. You got to be proud of her. People have been saying, we wish a Republican would stand up to Donald Trump. Everybody caves to him. Everybody kisses the ring. Everybody, Haley, the other's name, Joe Biden. Uh, so if you believe that the Republican Party can do better, resignation or saying she should get out, that yeah. make a lot of sense to me. As you say, cynicism that, or resignation. And I, I mean, I made the point, I, you know, look, just my point of view, 0.16% mm -hmm. of show. America is voting. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, you know, I understand our system. Yeah. But I think in the context but, of this unprecedented personality that we're talking about, it is incredible to think that we're in a moment where so few people could decide something so momentous. Yeah. Look, I too am invigorated <laughs> by that. Uh, but, uh, uh, but you know, look, here's the reality, and it has been from the beginning. He won among independents. But New Hampshire is the most inviting state for independents to participate. The Republicans are there are more moderate. Yeah. And once you leave this phase, I think South Carolina has money to do that. And what ultimately are you, uh, what, what, are you what are you looking at down the road here? She's 52 years old. I think she's not done this race. What, ha what you heard in that video were people saying, we liked her. She was a good governor. We think she was we, we're, we're supportive of her relation she has to make. Well, this is one thing that is important to keep in mind is that Donald Trump running in 2024 is markedly different than a Trump campaign. Susie Wiles, yes. this team, they know yes. what they're doing and they made a policy. But they did not say, go on out there and act like a jackass and, and, mm -hmm. and go self in that project. No, no, I mean, it didn't sound, didn't sound much like victory. All right, Margaret, today, um, it, Biden got a big endorsement. And it was an endorsement. I mean, you know, I wouldn't ordinarily say this was a big endorsement because one would expect it, but it had actually been up for grabs in some senses. Trump has been courting flop, and Donald and Joe Biden came away with, you know, the campaign slogan. And if you're if you're a proud working class person, you got to be proud of unions. If you're proud of unions, you should be proud of Joe Biden. And I was glad that the union, at least leadership, recognized that this is a, a pro-union. It would have been a blow if they did not endorse him. It was right. important for him to get in contrast with Trump. Trump talks like the working class, but he doesn't govern in their to their benefit. And I think that billions of dollars to the big three automakers. He earned it by being a good president uh, for, for, for later. Well, I respectfully will, disagree. All right. <laughs> and I guess we'll leave it like that. At least we keep it respectful in this forum. Uh, <laughs> thanks to all of you. And next, breaking news, the House investigation of Republican Matt Gates. a big development there. The committee now reaching out to a woman who allegedly had sex with the congressman as a minor. Plus questions growing over the fate of the Fulton County DA who's investigating Trump and is accused of mis mis misusing taxpayer funds while having an alleged affair with her lead prosecutor. Can Fonnie Willis survive? I'm going to speak to a former assistant DA there who knows Willis and her prosecutor. And it is becoming one of the most watched races in the United States, one that could give Democrats a shot at taking back the House but can they win back George Santos's seat?
Breaking news, CNN reporting exclusively that the House Ethics Committee investigating Republican Congressman Matt Gates has contacted the woman Gates allegedly had a sexual relationship when she was a minor. This is according to a source familiar with the committee's work. It's a sign that the Republican-led committee's investigation into Gates has expanded to include questions of alleged sex crimes. Paula Reed is out front. Paula broke this exclusive reporting. Um, so what more can you tell us about the allegations and the where the House is in, in the investigation? In addition to the outreach to this woman, the committee has also reached out to the Justice Department, asking for materials in its years-long investigation into the congressman. And the investigation into Congressman Gates actually... The DOJ, I understand that sources are telling you that the committee has contacted the DOJ formally and they've requested some of that information from the investigation that you're talking about into Gates. What do you know about that? So what's interesting about the ethics investigation is that it sort of was on hold, right? It was open in 2021, and then they decided to yield to the Justice Department's investigation. But when the Justice Department wrapped up, yeah. midway, it was actually a successful effort <laughs> to push McCarthy, right, from the speakership. Right. But now, right, in a post-Speaker McCarthy world, the investigation not only continues this ethics probe, but it's expanding. The big question now is to what extent will the Justice Department be willing to hand over materials without a subpoena, and even then. So that's the next thing to watch. All right, but uh, obviously significant that there are developments here on this front. Paula, thank you so much. And I want to turn now to the investigation of former President Trump in Georgia, where the focus has turned from Trump to the... So tonight, the race to replace George Santos is now the most closely watched special election in the United States, and it is only two weeks away. Democrats are hoping to flip the seat. Can they do it? Miguel Marquez is out front. This Aaron, Aaron no. Burnett, I'm afraid to say. Uh, look, if one thing George Santos can do, he's a rarity he's at all. It's going to be a fascinating one and so much at stake. Yeah. All right, thank you to Miguel. And next, an international brouhaha between the U.S. and the U.K. And yes, there will be even more tea puns after this. Tonight, causing a stir, tensions between the U.S. and U.K. boiling over after an American chemistry professor concluded that adding a pinch of salt is the secret to a perfect cup of tea. Well, the professor spilled the tea in a new book for which she researched documents spanning more than 1,000 years, did her homework, and she says the salt works to make the tea less bitter. Well, this is now a piping hot controversy across the pond. Just listen to how they're talking about it on British TV. Wow, it's the biggest brouhaha between Brits and Americans over tea since, well, you know. Well, the U.S. Embassy in London read the tea leaves and issued an official response, selling out the American professor, saying, well, thanks for joining us. Anderson starts now. <laughs> 